The typical structure file from the PDB is not suitable for immediate use in molecular modeling calculations. They usually consist of only heavy atoms and may include a co-crystallized ligand, water molecules, metal ions, and cofactors. Some structures are multimeric and may need to be reduced to a single unit. And because of the limited resolution of X-ray experiments, it can be difficult to distinguish between the carbonyl oxygen and secondary amine nitrogens of amides in crystal structures, so the placement of these groups must be checked. PDB structures may also be missing atoms and missing connectivity information, which must be assigned along with bond orders and formal charges. So, in this video exercise, we'll go through the Protein Preparation Wizard, which consists of a series of tools to prepare proteins in a form that is suitable for modeling calculations. The wizard will allow you to take a protein from its raw state, again, which may be missing hydrogen atoms and have incorrect bond order assignments, charge states, or orientations of various groups, and bring them to a state in which it is properly prepared for use by Schrodinger products such as Glide, Desmond, Macromodel, and many others. Here, we'll run the protein preparation wizard on a few examples. At first, we'll go through the various features in detail and then quickly run through a few more short examples towards the end. So, to launch the protein preparation wizard, just go to Applications, Protein Preparation Wizard. Or, if you're in the task view mode, go to Tasks, Protein Preparation. Or search for it in the task tree. There are three tabs in the Protein Preparation Wizard, which consists of all the tools for the stages for protein preparation. In the Import and Process tab, we can import a protein and perform basic tasks for fixing the structure. In the Review and Modify tab, we can delete unwanted chains and waters and fix or delete het groups. And in the Refine tab, we can optimize orientations of hydrogen bonded groups and minimize the structure. So for an unprocessed protein, such as one from the PDB, you should run through all three stages. Let's begin with an example. Here you can edit the job name if you wish, and note here the calculations will be performed on my local host which has four processes. And throughout the process we'll set it so we can see a mix of only polar hydrogens on the protein residues, but to also see all hydrogens for everything else like het groups. Now for this example we're going to use 3ERT, so here we're going to type 3ERT. But before we click import, note that there are some options to include, such as including the diffraction data, which is useful for checking or refining the structure with PrimeX, for example, the biological unit. Here, all structures of the biological unit are merged into a single entry. And here, you can also choose alternate positions if you want to make use of the alternate positions of atoms in the PDB file. Note, however, that these options are performed using the RCSB website, so internet access is required. Here, we won't use any of these options, so we'll just click Import. The PDB file is either downloaded automatically from the RCSB website, or it is retrieved from any local PDB installation if that has been set up. Note that we could have also browsed for the protein structure file. Once the structure has been imported, you will see it in the entry list and displayed in the workspace colored by the PDB conversion status. This scheme is a color-based error reporting scheme to call attention to parts of the molecule that may need additional attention. So in orange, we have non-standard residues, het groups, for example. Red shows a standard residue but contains missing atoms. So if I right-click this residue and zoom in, you'll notice that it is a lysine, but with the side chain atoms missing. Missing atoms are often seen in regions of the protein that are highly mobile with high B factors. And we can quickly confirm this by changing the color scheme to atom PDB factor. And note that indeed, these are regions of high B factors. Back to coloring by PDB conversion status, we also note some green residues. This shows a residue with an alternate conformation. So this histidine, for example, has an alternate conformation. Now we can either manually go into residue mode Select and right click the residue and choose switch alternate position or because there may be several of these we can use the protein preparation wizard to handle them which we'll do later on. Finally grey atoms correspond to standard residues connected by standard templates and that the confidence in bond orders assigned to these residues is high. Now here we have a collection of options to use when we pre-process. 
Align to gives you the option to align the protein to that of another protein that is either selected in the entry list or project table or aligning to a PDB ID. The alignment is done with the protein structure alignment tool in the tools menu. This option will assign bond orders. This option will add missing hydrogens. You can also remove original hydrogens first just to ensure that problems with hydrogen atom names or non-standard PDB atom names are fixed. Create zero order bonds to metals. This option breaks bonds to metals, replacing them with zero order bonds and adjusts the formal charge on the metals and the neighboring atoms. Sulfurs that interact with metals have their hydrogens removed if necessary and are assigned a negative charge. This option will detect and add bonds between sulfur atoms that are within 3.2 angstroms of each other. Note that CYS cysteines will be renamed to CYX cysteines. This option will convert selenomethionines to methionines. Keep in mind that this option should be used if you plan on using the OPLS 2001 force field, while OPLS 2005 does have parameters for selenium. Fill in missing side chains using prime and fill in missing loops using prime are options to add and optimize these missing atoms by running a prime structure refinement job. Prime of course being the protein refinement application. Now you can also do this later using prime separately, but since we know that we have missing side chain atoms in red, we'll click fill in missing side chains here. The cap termini options adds N acyl and N methyl amide groups to uncapped N and C termini. These termini include breaks in the chains where there may be missing residues. Now, if the residue breaks are far from the region of interest, such as a binding site, it may be sufficient to cap them. But if you prefer to fill in chain breaks rather than cap them, then you may want to select fill in missing loops using prime. Finally, this option deletes waters that are more than, in this case, five angstroms from het groups. So this is mainly useful for retaining waters that are important for ligand binding while deleting all other waters. Keep in mind though that there are other options for addressing waters in subsequent tabs. So for now, we'll just click pre-process and then we'll click continue to confirm that we're running prime as well in this example. Again, fill in missing side chain residues was an option. So if you're following along and don't have prime, you can uncheck that option. So once that stage has completed, a new entry will be incorporated into the entry list and workspace. Note that the protein preparation problems dialog box opened, alerting us to potential problems with atom types, missing atoms, overlapping atoms, or alternate positions. Here, it's stating that we have a proline with missing backbone atoms. Now, Prime could only fix missing sidechain atoms automatically, which is why it did not address the missing atoms on this residue. Now, we could either manually fix this, for example, with the Maestro Builder. However, because the region of interest for this specific protein is at the binding site and this proline is way out on the surface, far from the binding site, then it's safe to make a judgment call and ignore it for now. It looks like there are alternate positions reported for some residues. We already knew this as they were colored green when we imported the PDB, but here in the problems dialog box, we can easily switch to their alternate position and see the current average occupancies as they change. By default, the position with the highest average occupancy is used, so here we'll just click OK. Note that in addition to the problems dialog box, we can also open the protein reports or Ramachandran plot at any stage during the process to monitor and inspect the changes we make. For example, here we can inspect the steric clashes. So after fixing any structural defects, the next stage is to inspect the structure and modify or delete unwanted parts, which is carried out here in the review and modify tab. First, we'll click Analyze Workspace and note that the tables are then populated with information on chains, waters, and head groups. Here we have chain A. Here we have the waters listed. And here we have the head groups, which in this case is the co crystallized ligand. To delete chains, waters, or head groups, just select them in the table and then click Delete. Let's just delete one water for now as an example. Here, water number 5 is within 5 angstroms of the ligand, but is also in a solvent exposed region and is most likely just a bulk water, so we'll just delete it. Now, keep in mind that when deleting waters, the hydrogen bonding network has not yet been optimized, so we may just want to leave the other waters alone for now. Next, we need to correct the ionization and tautomeric states of the listed het groups, in this case, the ligand. So here, we'll click Generate States to run an epic job at the target pH range. Note that we could have also checked on metal binding states if our ligand was binding to a metal. Now, when that job completes and incorporates into the workspace, you'll notice that two states were predicted by EPIC. 
we have the original state, which is marked on the ligand here, and keeps the tertiary amine neutral and has a high state penalty. Or state 2, which protonates the amine, has an almost zero state penalty, and thus is predicted to be the likely protonation state, in which case we'll keep it on S2 and proceed on over to the final stage. The first section under the Refine tab involves optimizing the hydrogen bonding network. This is achieved by reorientating hydroxyl and thiol groups, water molecules, amide groups of asparagine and glutamine, and the imidazole ring in histidines, as well as predicting the protonation states of histidines, aspartic acids and glutamic acids, and also the tautomeric states of histidines. Here we have the option to sample water orientations, and here, the Use Crystal Symmetry option will include the analysis of any hydrogen bonds to atoms in neighboring cells. This can be important if only part of the biologically relevant structure is present in the asymmetric unit. And then this option will perform minimization of all sampled hydrogens following optimization. Now, there are two options to choose from when applying automated optimization. We can either use Propka at pH 7.0 and use the option to label PKAs. Note that there is some more information on Propka, including references on the methodology in the protein preparation user manual. Or we can use the simplified rules, which for very low would protonate aspartic acid, glutamic acid, and histidines. Low would protonate histidines, neutral will use the normal biological states, and high would deprotonate cysteines. In this example, we'll just use the default settings and click Optimize. So once that's done, we can inspect the protein and note the residue flips that optimize hydrogen bonding interactions. Now the next step is optional, and that is to use the interactive optimizer to optimize hydrogen bonds interactively. We have a separate video dedicated to the interactive H-bond optimizer, but to go through it quickly, all you need to do is click Analyze Network, select a species, and then you can use the arrow keys to cycle through the various states. Here you can also pick states in the workspace, as well as look at clusters of species. The next step is also optional, and that is to remove waters with less than a specified number of hydrogen bonds to non-waters. This allows you to keep waters that have significant binding to the receptor. For example, keeping it on three will retain any structural or bridging waters. In this example, we'll go ahead and use this option, which should remove the remaining waters around the binding site. Keep in mind though, that this option is more of an alternative to removing waters manually, like we did in the Review and Modify tab, or like deleting waters beyond five angstroms from HET groups, like in the Import and Process tab. The final step in the preparation process is to refine the structure. Here, a minimization is run in which heavy atoms can be restrained so that the strain can be relieved, but in which the final result does not deviate too much from the input geometry. We also have the option to minimize hydrogens only, although hydrogen atoms are not restrained at all even if left unchecked, which still allows the optimized hydrogen bonding network from the previous step to be refined. And here we can specify the RMSD of the atom displacement for terminating the minimization. 0.3 angstroms is a good default setting for alleviating steric clashes and relaxing the side chains. So when ready, we'll click minimize. Here we can monitor the progression of the job using the job monitor panel. Once the job is complete, we have a fully prepared protein ready for modeling. Now that we have gone through the various features and settings in depth, let's quickly run through another example. Let's choose 1KIM, then click Import. Notice that this structure shows atoms colored cyan, in addition to the red atoms of missing side chains upon import. The cyan residues indicate that the adjacent residue is missing, for example, when there is a missing loop. So, in this case, we'll check on both fill in missing side chains using prime and fill in missing loops with prime. We'll leave everything else on default settings and click pre-process and then continue and don't show again to confirm we're also running prime to fill in the missing atoms. Now that's done, we'll include the protein before and after and then tile entries so that we can see the difference. And you'll notice that the loop has been filled in. Keep in mind though that we should refine the loop further with prime later on, especially if this area is of particular interest. In this case, however, we're really focused on the binding site region, so let's just continue. A couple of missing backbone atoms are reported here. Now, Prime could only fix missing sidechain atoms automatically, which is why it did not address the missing atoms on these residues. 
We could either fix this manually with the Maestro Builder, however, because the region of interest for this specific protein is at the binding site region, and these alanines are far from the binding site, then it's safe to ignore them for now. There also appears to be some overlapping atoms. These are actually just some of the polar hydrogens on the predicted loop, so these should get fixed later on during hydrogen bonding optimization. Over in the Review and Modify tab, we'll click Analyze Workspace. We have two chains, A and B, and we have a co-crystallized ligand in each chain, as well as some sulfate ions. And we also have the list of waters. Now we won't delete anything here, but we will run EPIC to generate states for the ligand, so let's click Generate States. Looks like the original state has the lowest state penalty, it's neutral, and it makes three hydrogen bonds, which we can see here. The second state has a high state penalty, is negatively charged, and only makes two hydrogen bonds. So in this case, we'll keep the original state. We'll do the same for the other ligand in the other chain, and just continue on. Here, we'll click Optimize in the H bond assignment section. Now, optimizing the hydrogen bonding is important because X-ray structures do not usually have enough resolution to fix the orientation of terminal amides or histidines or the orientation of hydroxyls and thiols. Indeed, it looks like this histidine in the binding site was improved such that before it made no hydrogen bonds, but afterwards the tautomer is flipped, resulting in an intramolecular hydrogen bond. Next, we'll remove waters with less than three hydrogen bonds to non-waters. Now notice we are left with a couple of water molecules here, bridging interactions between the ligand and the receptor. This may indicate we have waters critical in binding for other ligands other than this one. However, we won't know for sure right away. At the very least, this critical piece of information should warrant further investigation as to whether we want to include these waters when virtual screening for new ligands, either by running tools like Bioilluminate's Consensus Viewer to identify conserved waters for this target, or to use more advanced simulations to estimate the water network and thermodynamics like running WaterMap. Finally, we'll click Minimize to run a restrained minimization to remove atom clashes and relax the sidechain and other modifications made to the protein. Now once that's done, we are left with a fully prepared protein ready for modeling. Now here, we'll choose another protein to prepare, this time one with a metal binding site. Let's choose 1TMN, then click Import. We'll ensure that zero order bonds to metals is checked and leave the other settings on defaults, then click Pre-Process. If we zoom in on the ligand, we can see the zero order bonds to the metal represented by the dashed lines. Here, the zero order bonds define connectivity between the metal and the ligating atoms, but still allows the metal to be treated as an ion for the purposes of force field calculations. In other words, the zero order bonds maintain the input coordination geometry via bond, stretch and angle constraints, and also allows the distribution of charge through the entire coordination group. Zero order bonds can be treated like any other bond in Maestro, so in this case we'll clean up this representation and delete the bond between the ion and the carbon on this ligand. Looks like we have a few hydrogen overlaps, which as stated below should get fixed later on during hydrogen bonding assignment. Next we'll go to Review and Modify, and click Analyze Workspace. We'll note that we have a bunch of calcium ions, the zinc ion, and the co-crystallized ligand. Here, we won't make any modifications or deletions, but we will generate states with EPIC, but this time we'll turn on metal binding state. This increases the pH range to generate additional states appropriate for binding to metalloproteins. Now here, it is suggesting the best state for the ligand is state 2, in which case the amine is protonated to a charge of plus 1. This makes sense, as not only does it have the lowest state penalty, but this state also makes the most number of hydrogen bonds to the receptor. Now over in the Refine tab, we'll use the default settings to optimize the hydrogen bonding network. Notice that this glutamate is now protonated, resulting in an additional hydrogen bond with the ligand. We'll remove any non-structural waters, which should get rid of most of the waters here. Finally, we'll click Minimize to run a restrained minimization to remove atom clashes and relax the sidechain and other modifications made to the protein. Once that's done, the protein is fully prepared and ready for modeling. We'll choose another protein to prepare, this time a kinase. We'll type 1A9U, then import. No changes to the defaults are needed here, so we'll just click pre-process. 
Next, under Review and Modify, we'll generate states for the bound ligand. Now here, the original state and state 2 have similar and low state penalties, but the original state makes an additional hydrogen bond, so we'll use this state going forward. We'll use the default settings to optimize the hydrogen bonding assignment. Next, we'll remove waters with less than 3 hydrogen bonds to non-waters. And finally, we'll click Minimize to run a restrain minimization to alleviate any significant steric clashes. Once that's done, the protein is fully prepared and ready for modeling.